Hey guys, Richard Older here. Thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel. 4.6 two valve modular Ford guys. How much power is the trick flow intake manifold worth on a naturally aspirated 4.6 two valve? More importantly, how do I get even more power? And as we know, the answer is always boost. In this case, it comes from a Kenny Bell twin screw. In this video, we're going to answer the age old question. How do I add more power to my 4.6 two valve modular Ford? And the answer as always is boost. In this case, we added a 2.6 liter Kenny Bell twin screw supercharger and ran the boost up from about 10 pounds over 20 pounds. But before we did that, I answered another question. How much power is the trick flow 4.6 two valve intake worth on a naturally aspirated 4.6. Okay, 4.6 or 2V modular guys. Here's some testing for you. And this is an interesting test because we started out doing some NA testing on this particular combination, then later on added a Kenny Bell. So we're going to get to both of those. So this thing was actually a 4.6 valve long block supplied by the guys at Sean Highland way back. This thing was set up because we told them we were going to be running boost. So it was a stock crank and not even a Cobra crank is actually uh, the stock 2V crankshaft, but we've never heard a crankshaft in all the stuff that we've been doing, so we thought it was going to be plenty strong, but it did have forged rods and forged pistons in it. The pistons were low compression. This was right at 9.1, 9.2 to 1 with the factory PI head. The factory PI head were basically stock. It had a valve job. It had valve springs because we were putting camshafts in these things. We ended up using the Comp XE270 AH cams, which are pretty good size. We could have used a set of ported heads that this thing combination would have run much better. And obviously, when we did our uh, early non-PI short block and then the ported PI heads, that combination made a lot more power because it had a lot more compression and it had ported heads. But this was a stock head. It had the 270 cams in it. We topped it with a PI intake manifold and an AccuFab throttle body. We had Cook's long tube headers and we did have boiler mufflers on it, although the mufflers had no effect on power. To run the NA motor, we had 36 pound injectors on it. And this thing was run with a, um, a fast XFI management system on it. We obviously optimized the tune. This thing ran best with about 30, or 30 degrees of timing and then run NA with a stock PI intake. This thing made 348 horsepower and 349 foot pounds. And I wanted to show you before we get to our boost, what happens when we ran this thing with a trick flow intake manifold swap. So we put the trick flow um, intake manifold and the uh, big oval throttle body on that. And here's what happened. Let me put the trick flow stuff on. You can see, and, and we see this often, um, this kind of test uh, paralleled what happened when I put the Reichart Racing on there, or the Bullet, um, those kinds of manifolds on there. What happens is compared to the PI manifold, which is a very long runner manifold, we lose low speed power and we did do that on this test, but we picked up a lot. You can see, you know, you can talk about the fact that out here at 6,500 RPM, we went from 327 horsepower to 371. So a lot of power gain, but, you know, peak to peak, we went from 348 to 371. And this thing was actually probably still carrying if we were to continue to rev it out there. Um, so if you want your power, you know, at the high, <laughs> excuse me, at the high RPM range of the scale, this kind of manifold works fairly well. And the trick flow manifold is slightly longer runner than some of the very short stuff. And it works okay. But again, there's almost always a trade-off between runner length. When you, when you shorten the runner, you're almost always going to trade low speed power for top end power. And that's exactly what happened here. So now let's take a look and find out what happened when we added boost to the equation. Now that we've taken a look at some NA modifications, let's take a look and see what happened when we added a Kenny Bell supercharger to our 4.6 liter two valve. Because if there's one thing that makes a two valve motor a lot better, that's boost. So we added a Kenny Bell supercharger. In this case, it was a 2.6 liter blower. We have, I have other videos up where we added a smaller blower when we first got our junkyard motor and that worked out very well. So we thought, hey, let's put a bigger blower on there and kind of see what happens. So we ran the 2.6 liter blower with the big oval throttle body and the mammoth intake and stuff and all of that worked out very well. Here's what happened when we put it on. We ran uh, bigger injectors on this and we ran a a mix of pump gas and 114 race gas to make sure that we could run uh, plenty of boost and plenty of timing. In this case, we're at about 22 degrees with the blower. And this thing also had an air to water intercooler run on. So here is our combination with the Kenny Bell. The Kenny Bell was set up with a 7.5 inch 
uh, crank pulley and a 4.25 inch blower pulley and that produced a peak boost of about 10.9 pounds out here at 6700 and you can see with the short runner kenny bell intake the thing like with the tfs manifold wants to keep revving because it has short runners but it made 552 horsepower Nice flat torque curve here with a peak of 482 foot-pounds of torque. So again, it did very well. It picked up power everywhere as we would expect a positive displacement twin screw blower to do that. I'm going to go ahead and show you the boost curves because we ran this at a variety of different boost levels because you have this here and you have force induction and pulley swaps are very easy. So all you have to do is change the pulley and get more boost and more power. And that's exactly what we did. So we went from the 4.25 pulley down to a four inch pulley and voila, more boost everywhere, more power. With the 4.25, uh, we had 10.9 and this brought it up to 13.1 with the four inch pulley. You know, and if a little bit is good, more is better. So this is a 3.75 inch pulley that brought boost up to 15 pounds. So now we're up to 627 horsepower and that was up from 586 with the 4.25. Uh, with a four inch pulley. So because we had smaller pulleys, we went from the 3.75 inch pulley to the three and a half inch pulley. And again, more boost. Peak power was up to 670 horsepower. Peak torque was now up to 591 foot pounds. So this thing was doing very well, but hey, if a 3.5 inch pulley is good, we also had a 3.25 inch pulley to add even more boost. Here's what happened. Now we're up right near right near 700 horsepower 698 or 99 horsepower peak torque was up to 631 foot pounds and with the 3.25 inch pulley we were up near 20 pounds of boost our final test was run with a three inch blower pulley and we also put a radius air inlet on this because this was the smallest pulley that we had so this was as much boost as we can run we also put a radius air entry on the throttle body here's what happened 749 horsepower and peak torque was up to 684 foot pounds so again you know that's a lot of power the kenny bell was this 2.6 was capable of supporting you know well into four digit power ranges i'm pretty certain and we had a lot more left but what we needed really on this 4.62 valve was a more powerful combination to start out with something with ported heads would be better something with maybe a little bit more cam timing in it obviously would be also better if the motor was bigger all of that stuff would be better but still we made pretty good power now let's take a look at the boost curves offered by the change in pulley size Very quickly, I want to show you the boost curves offered by the Kenny Bell 2.6 liter twin screw supercharger on our 4.6 liter two valve motor. And you can see the boost curve is kind of flat up to about 5,000. And then we start to see a rise in boost. You'll see on a, on, this is a scale of from eight pounds to 11 pounds. So you see, once we get to a bigger scale, this will actually flatten out. So it's a relative curve, but you can see that the boost curve is rising toward the end. So you might be thinking, well, is that because the, Charge temperature is getting hot because the blower is getting inefficient. Actually, it's exactly the opposite of that. The, the blower can certainly support any kind of power level that this motor could produce. The problem is that the motor is not is getting less efficient at higher engine speeds. It's not processing the air. We basically need more motor and then this boost curve would actually flatten out. But let's go ahead, let's go ahead and take a look and see. This is with our 4.25 inch pulley. Here's our boost curve at our four inch pulley. And you can still, you know, same kind of shape. Here's what happened when we installed the 3.75 pulley. Notice that the shape of the curves is all the same. Everything is just raised. Here's our three and a half inch pulley. 3.25. And then finally our three inch blower 
or the pulley with the air inlet. And you can see now the curves look a little bit flatter. The nice thing is they're making as a positive displacement should. It's making a lot of boost even down low, even at 3000 RPM. So if you're looking to make more torque from your 4.6 under two valve, obviously a positive displacement blower works very well. But again, now if you look at the scale, we're going from seven pounds to 22 pounds on the scale. The curves look a lot flatter. It doesn't change what the starting point is in the end point. It just changes the way that you look at it. They look different now. But we do have a rising boost curve offered by the Kenny Bell on our combination. And as I said, the way to help eliminate that is to make the NA motor more powerful. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn in this little venture running the Kenny Bell Twin Screw 2.6 liter supercharger on our 4.6 valve motor? Did we learn that boost adds power? No, not really. I think we already knew that. But what we did learn running the Kenny Bell blower on our 4.6 valve, especially if you look at the boost curves, we saw an interesting thing. We see a rise in boost pressure at the end of the curve. And while we could easily turn the blower up even more, there was plenty of boost and power left in that 2.6 liter Kenny Bell. What I would like to do is actually try to make more power power with less boost by making the naturally aspirated combination even more powerful. I'd like to port the heads, put a bigger camshaft in it or cams in it because it has two of those and then run the same blower at the same speed and find out if we can make more power at less boost. I'm Richard Old. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Always, always, always more and more testing coming your way.